Welcome back, everybody. Just completed the build of the electrical system and the SUV, but I'll let you guys see it. Just hold on. Hope you enjoy it. Took me a while. Was a car coming? Let me get out of the way. But I'm gonna let you guys see the build. It's an excellent, excellent build. Hooked up a 4,000 watt inverter. Took me a little bit over two hours to do the wiring over because I improved it to four gauge. I had eight gauge, moved it to four gauge. So everything is working out well, tested it, cooked on it. And I'm gonna let you see all about it. So here it is. And remember, subscribe. If you guys are watching and you're new to the channel, I'm Ricky, I travel around the US with my family. Sometimes I do it alone in my SUV. When I'm with the family, I'm in the RV trailer. Hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you aboard. Check out the channel, check out the playlist. It's great merchandise, great things for you to see. All right, it's time to do the electrical work. This is the back of the system. This is what you hide from people that you don't see in most people's videos because this is the back of the system. I learned how to do that. But here are my batteries. There's five of them down here. So I'm going to disconnect them and uh, put the proper gauge wire to handle the inverters. All right, that's two of the batteries out. Coming up on the last couple, and that's it. Then I can start rewiring. Okay, the batteries are removed. Now, I'm gonna disconnect these eight gauge wires here that's leading up to the battery. And this is my fuse block. Well, it's not a fuse block, it's a bus bar. All right, we back in the sticks and bricks just to cut up these wires and complete the installation. What I'm gonna have is some wire crimpers, wire cutters. I have my four gauge wire. Now I'm gonna compare the four gauge wire to the other wires that I have. Also have the terminal endings and some heat shrink tubing and a source to warm up the heat shrink. Now I wanna compare this four gauge wire to these four gauge booster cables that I bought at Harbor Freight. This was $32 for 20 feet of uh, four gauge wire. And this was $50 for 25 feet of four gauge wire. I saw that they had another two gauge wire. And that one was 40 bucks. That was at uh, Harbor Freight. So let's compare the two wires. All right, after comparing the two wires, I see that they're both around the same gauges. Well, not about exactly, but the wire the wrapping from Harbor Freight is much more thick. It's like harder. This one is softer that I got from Amazon. They both will be good. Now with the ones from Harbor Freight, these are jumper cables. You can still use the four gauge wire. So what I do is I cut this piece off and I crimped it earlier. I'm gonna do it again. But once you crimp it and put the shrink tube in, you can use it just like any other four gauge wire with the terminal endings on it. Here's a side by side comparison. This one is the eight gauge wire that I was using is really thin. And this is the four gauge wire, which you can see the thickness difference right away. This is the, uh, the heat shrink tubing. Once you crimp the wire on, you can use any source that you have Remember, the four gauge wire is really good when it comes to using these high powered inverters. Because like I said, I had a eight gauge wire with the inverter and once I pulled 1000 watts, it showed that it wasn't enough. Like I needed a thicker wire. So we're gonna start off with the four gauge and then eventually we're gonna go down to two if we need it or zero gauge but we're in a small suv so we're not gonna power much out of it all the wires are done i'm so happy these here are the wires for the battery to connect everything in parallel and these over here are going from the inverter to the circuit breaker then to the battery so i separate everything so i don't get confused these are the wires I have left over or four gauge. This is the 4,000 watt inverter that I'm gonna be hooking up. I told you guys that before. They come with wires here. Looks like they're double wires to put it to like a two gauge, but I don't know. We're gonna try it out. If I feel it heating up, then I'm not gonna use them. 
thing with a nifty remote too which is pretty cool okay it's not the prettiest setup in the back but this is what everyone does not see the inverter is down here this is the 4000 watt inverter i'm gonna check it out to see if it's uh it's working it, it turns on but let me see if i can get power out of it these are the cords here and again this is in the car and uh again i have all the batteries hooked up i changed the gauge of wire these are now bigger wires you can see from here these are all bigger wires so that i shouldn't have those overheating issues but let me check the scene now okay so this is the remote switch up here you just hold it and it should cut on the inverter that's the inverter on so in the same frame we're gonna use this and see how well it goes. Ooh, that's on that's on and that's plugged in to the 1500 watt inverter so that's working there that's plugged on that's 1500 watt that's the 4000 watt inverter there so everything is working all right the battery system is updated these are the four gauge wires here they're holding up the inverter does turn on i checked it i didn't show you guys so let me just show you guys that it does turn on so i have to blindly find the switch to turn it on here we go wait that's not it okay this is the inverter the 1500 watt inverter so that turns that on and then i'm blindly looking for the switch and then this up here is the remote for a 4000 watt inverter you just hit that and it's whisper quiet you just hear a beep for it to cut on so it's really good and then you just hold it and it turns off and i'm recharging my batteries it's at 100 percent and down here is the no coal battery charger that charges up the lithium batteries so it's a win now you can see the difference in the size of those wires there they are huge you can see the smaller wires compared to the much bigger wires uh you can see one that is exposed there i only put the bigger wires that hook up to the 4000 and the uh, 1500 watt inverters but this is the back everything is nearly the same all right let's check the inverter now this is the moment of truth got my handy fire extinguisher here so here we go okay the inverter is on says we had 13.3 the the battery the voltage so let's check it out let's turn this bad boy on right here and let's see how it goes let's warm it up and see how it goes all right so far so good i didn't hear any beeping from the inverter I don't see any smoke. And let me feel the wire over here. Oh, that wire is nice and cool. Let me check some of the other wires. All right, here's the inverter over here. And I got to feel some of the wires here. And, you know, it's nice and cool. Nice and cool. I'm feeling for any type of heat. No heat. Well, this test is a success. I turned up the griddle it's up to about 300 the wires are cool to the touch they're not warming up so that's what i want and i can continue recharging my batteries as soon as i finish this breakfast sandwich nothing special but i'm gonna eat it all right i'm back in the trailer and this video is sponsored by patio gym Patio Gym sent me a propane refill adapter so that you can refill your one pound bottles with the 20 pound bottle. Let me show you how it looks. So it comes in this cool box. Again, this Patio Gym. I need two hands in order to take it out. But this is how it looks. You have the part here that hooks onto your 20 pound bottle, the can. And this part here hooks onto your one pound can. I'm glad I didn't throw out my use propane this one is empty but you have to chill it before you start so we're going to put it in the fridge so it's in the fridge chilling let's go out and get that propane ready this adapter from patio gym has the 20 pound adapter this one goes on your one pound tank 
So let's hook it up. Okay, this is your normal propane. You hook this up to the 20 pound side. Make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Tighty righty, lefty loosey. This here is your valve. This is in the off position and you just turn it so that it can be on on position. But you wanna connect your one pound tank that's in the refrigerator. Let's go get that. One hour has passed. One thing about these one pound cans is that you can feel when it's empty. It has some sort of weight to it when there's something in it. So you can feel it and feel when it's empty. Okay, this is the off position. You wanna be in the on position. When you turn it on, you gotta see that. Excuse the mess, but this is how you wanna. You wanna invert your 20 pound can. Let's turn it upside down. Then you wanna have this in the off position. When you get it, it may be on the on position. And to turn it on, you just turn this lever where it's gonna be in line and you will hear it filling up. You wanna leave it there for about 45 minutes. If you listen closely, you can hear it filling. Usually takes about 40 minutes, I'll leave it, 40 minutes. Some people leave it for an hour, but remember to chill the one pound bottle first. The break and watch the kids fly it down the hill over here. They like that bad boy. All right, after the hour has passed, you just come right back to your bottle here. You turn the valve to the off position and you unscrew it off. Now, just holding it up from the weight, you can feel it's heavier than when it feels when it's empty. It's about a pound now. I don't think it gets to exactly a pound. It's probably a little less than a pound, but you feel the difference in the weight once you fill it up. Again, this video is sponsored by Patio Gym. Check the links in the description down below and it will take you right to Amazon where you can purchase and further look at this propane refill adapter by Patio Gym. It works with the one pound bottle and the 20 pound bottle. You can transfer the 20 pound bottle to the one pound bottle and you never have to buy these again. These are getting really, really expensive now. So thank you Patio Gym for sending this to me. Here you go guys, link is in the description. Ah, oh, welcome back guys. I'm on my walk as usual. I have to go to the market today to buy some stuff for the family. But after that, you know, we get to come back and just chill out and relax. I love these days off. Seems like they don't come by soon enough. I should start posting more, you know, just to keep you guys abreast of all my journeys. Whew. But it's just so much work, but I'm happy to be off today. Even I got my dog with me, he's having fun. Mac, you having fun? Let me let you guys see Mac. Mac loved these journeys. He just walks, I have to pull him back. You should have saw him, we saw a deer not too long ago. And by the time I got my camera out, the deer already ran away. But he had fun looking at the deer. The deer actually came close to him because he acts very submissive when it comes to other animals, children, and adults. A great dog. My wife just bought me some sandals from uh, Amazon. Love Amazon but these things were replicas. They were really good looking Nike sandals, but they were replicas and I was so upset. You know, I contacted Amazon to let them know that uh, they were replicas. They were not authentic and they told me it was from a third party seller. So I told them, you know, it's better to reconsider those third party sellers because of them selling goods that are not authentic. Now, when people buy Nikes, you're gonna want an authentic pair of Nikes, especially if you pay $70 for some sandals. But the representatives from Amazon were really nice. They told me to keep the sandals and they refunded me the money. Now the problem with the sandals were, was that Nike, they're not gonna make a sandal with a plastic bottom. It's rubber. Plastic is very dangerous if you're on like a slippery surface, you go sliding. So they refunded me the money. I let them know exactly what was wrong with the shoe. They did put some like uh, material on parts of the sole just to make it seem like you won't slip, but that will wear off right away. Nike doesn't do that. I've been wearing Nike sneakers and sportswear for over 20 years, 
and I've never seen that before. So I knew it was not authentic just from touching it. But they did let me keep it. I'm gonna walk with it on concrete. I'm not gonna walk with it on a uh, slippery surface, but I'm gonna let you guys see it. They're nice looking shoes, but they're not authentic. If you're a seller on Amazon, please don't sell things that are not authentic. We don't like that. Here are the shoes here. From far, they do look authentic. They don't feel like Nike shoes though. They feel like cheap shoes that you would buy from a cheap place. But I'm going to wear it. You know, Amazon said I can keep it, but it's not great to sell things that are replicas and sell them as they're authentic. Look at this beautiful pool. Look at that, they're so nice. We're getting ready to go in there, Memorial Day weekend. Oh, look what we found. It's tennis courts, but it says no dogs allowed. It's pretty cool. That's some great things over here. Oh, spongy. You like it in here? You know how to play tennis? Yeah. This is cool, right? Yeah. Come on. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Walmart, here we come. Second shop of the day, we going into Audi. Oh, they don't have the patties I was looking for. All right, we gotta head back in, get our quarter. And say bye to Aldi, going back home to cook. Let's see today's damage, 6057, 16 gallons, not bad. All right, we back from the market. Hope you enjoyed that short video sponsored by Patio Gym. They're great, check them out, links in the description. I'm about to make these burgers and put them on the grill in the car because we're still testing out our system right i'm ready to go i'm cooking in the back of the suv i'm ready to go i'm still testing out everything so let's go sunset in the background the burgers on right there have some little bit of seasoning here's the grill i smell it heating up I'm using my bed i don't have a table gotta put one in here let's go we're gonna try to do four burgers at a time put a little bit of onion powder no one has too much. A bit of black pepper. You ain't living unless you have some Mike's hard lemonade. Oh yeah. We have about what well, one, two, three, four, five, six to go. And we can eat the dinner. Ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait. That's four done. Four more on the grill. Time is limited, so we have to throw six burgers on. Not bad. Still checking the wires, they're still good. My doggy over there, he wants to get out. Look at him. He's like, why did you put me in here? He don't like being in there. <laughs> but keeps him good. He's outside. Isn't he beautiful? Down, Mac, down. Down. Get down. Get down. 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 Ooh. Make you come after him before he gets it out. I don't know if you guys can see that my battery is still at 100%. The inverter of the fan is kicked on, but my battery is still at 100%. That's amazing. You know, I'm cooking electric griddle, and the battery 
is still at 100%. All right, the food is done. The kids are eating. I'm gonna enjoy this burger here. Remember, check out Patio Gym, the link for the propane refill adapter in the description. Can't wait to try this burger. Mmm. It's juicy. Not bad. Look at that. Mm. Nice. Nice. Mm -mm -mm. Nice. Mm. Mm -mm. All right, guys. I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to enjoy this burger. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment below. This is awesome. I'm still losing weight. Still have burgers too. But thank you again for uh, watching. If you stuck around this long. See you later, everybody.